Today I'm talking about three recent Korean romance dramas. And the names of those three films are 20th Century Girl, Be With You, and Soulmate. Up its top is 20th Century Girl. This is a 2022 film and the basic premise is in 1999 there are these two best friends one of whom has a heart condition and she has to go to america to deal with it and what makes matters worse is she just had a really great meet cute moment with an adorable boy so she enlists her best friend to spy on the cute boy during the new school year and then report back to her everything she learns about him while she's gone so then when she comes back she will be able to to woo him with all of this inside knowledge. So the best friend does this, but then maybe she gets a little attracted to the boy's best friend. Hmm. And it's amazing. I loved this movie so, so much. Like legitimately by the end of the movie, by like halfway through the movie, my face was hurting from how much I was smiling and frowning like it's super adorable like almost over the top with just how cute this movie is but then like it balances that out with going to some sad places there's like a 10 minute chunk where i'm just straight frowning the entire time and it was just ugh. Oh, it was a lot of emotions. It's just, oh God, it's so good. I love the lead to the best friend character, but really all of the actors did a great job. They're really interesting characters, really fun story. It goes to some fun places and it has a great, great ending. It's not necessarily the ending that you hope for, but it's the ending that makes a lot of sense. Cause like, it's really about teenagers not being able to properly express their emotions because they're teenagers. That makes sense. And like, it's so frustrating at times, but in a good way, in the way the movie intended it to be. But you're just like, just tell the guy how you feel. Tell that person how you feel. Just use your words, use your words, and then things will be better. Everyone knows things will be better if you just talk this through. Come on, just do it. And then they don't, and then things get worse because of that. But it's all in like a very realistic way. So yeah, the movie's just about like those missed opportunities that happen if you don't properly express your emotions. And yeah, no, it's brilliant. It's so incredibly well done. I love this movie a lot, and I cannot recommend this movie enough. It's delightful, it's charming, it's sad, it's beautiful, it, it, ugh. it hits all the boxes and then some. So yes, 100% recommend this movie. Watch it. It's incredible. Yes. The next up is Be With You. This is a 2018 film and the basic premise is there's this dad and six-year-old son who are mourning at the loss of the wife slash mom. But the boy isn't too worried because he believes that in one year during the next rainy season, mom is gonna come back for the period of the rainy season and then they get to hang out and have lots of fun there. And it's really interesting. It's definitely a cute movie. I really like the mom a lot. Both, I think she gave a great performance also. I am definitely attracted to her. She wore some capris and I'm like, oh, those are nice. Those are nice. Anyway. I think the premise of this movie is really interesting because like when the mom comes back she doesn't actually remember anything so they spend a lot of the movie just like telling the story of their relationship and that's really really good. Where this movie truly shines is the flashback stuff of seeing them fall in love and go through that whole experience. It's really really beautiful and I think the end works really well too. But where this movie kind of came down a little bit for me is really the beginning. I think it spent a lot of time focusing on this six-year-old boy. The kid was not a bad actor. He did a good job but I just didn't care about him and his problems as much as I cared about or got invested in the relationship between the mom and the dad, what they had going on. So like, yes, the kid's relationship with the mom is important and interesting, but it just didn't hit the same way as the relationship between the two parents. And so I think had it focused on the parents more so than the kid, it would have struck a better chord with me. Don't get me wrong though, this is a quite like, so it's basically a four to five. It's a pretty dang good movie that I would again recommend. It's definitely well well worth a watch. It goes into some interesting places. It covers some interesting emotions. And I think it's a very unique idea that in and of itself is worth checking out. It just didn't perfectly strike a chord with me, but even though it didn't, I think other people should definitely give it a watch. So yes, definitely good. Would recommend. 
And lastly is Soulmate. This is a 2023 film and the basic premise is in elementary school in the 90s these two girls become quick friends and then they kind of become more than friends when the one mom has to move away. They essentially become sisters but maybe there's a little underlying romance aspect to it. They don't really explore that too much. Anyway, I really like the aesthetic of this film. I really liked the two lead women. I think they did a great job. The story is definitely very interesting. Where this movie really missed the mark for me is it's confusing. It's very confusing. They jump around the timeline a lot. Like there's a framing device of one of them reading a blog that was written by one of the two of them because like in the most present time they've kind of fallen apart. And so like the story is told just through a series of flashbacks but sometimes they tell a flashback and that flashback is a lie. There was a time like we went through a scene one time and then like the next scene starts and they start to get into it and then like we just quickly go back and we revisit that scene and actually know that wasn't exactly how that happened. So like that's just straight up confusing. And like they do stuff like that all the time of just like jumping around and I'm like I don't know where we are in the timeline. Like it was easiest when like they were little and it was very clearly different actors playing the characters but like as they got older I'm like what's the timeline here? Where are we at? What is going on? And there are twists and turns in this but like in a sense they kind of come out of nowhere. I do think what they reveal works and is good but because every everything's just so unnecessarily complex and messy. It just, it doesn't work. I liked the film. I liked a lot of stuff about this film, but I think the execution of it, it's almost unwatchable, which is frustrating because there's so much to like within this film. It is a remake, so I'm definitely curious about checking out the original, but yeah, no, I did put this in the liked category, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's unfollowable. So yeah, I liked it, but I wouldn't recommend it. Alrighty, now for today's rankings. First up, we got 20th Century Girl sitting at number one in the really like section. I was honestly really surprised that I put it that high, but like, man, you just nailed those emotions so hard. And then after that is Be With You sitting at number 34 in the quite like section. And then bringing up the rear is Soulmate sitting at number 50 in the liked section. And this is a total of 66 old movies so far this year.